Hi everyone, welcome to New Bern Parish's Messy Church Online Easter Extravaganza. Now first, you're going to do a really exciting craft with Helen. Then you're going to listen to a really excellent talk with Jenny. If you enjoy this video, don't forget to like it and to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss an update. Hope you have an extraordinary amount of fun. Welcome to the Easter Messy Church Craft. Today we're going to make an Easter garden out of biscuits and icing that represents the tomb that Jesus was placed in after he was crucified. For this craft you're going to need icing sugar, water, green food colouring, some sugar sprinkles, chocolate mini eggs, two types of biscuits, a knife, spoons and a sieve. Here is a short Easter prayer to say once you've finished your craft. In the Easter garden, the leaves are turning green. In the Easter garden, the risen Lord is seen. In the Easter garden, we know that God above brings us all to heaven through Jesus and love. Amen. Hello. It's lovely to see you again. I'm sure you can remember that at Christmas we celebrate the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. Can you remember where he was born? Was it in a big posh hospital or a hotel or a palace? No, it wasn't. He was born in a stable where animals live, a poor place, and they laid him in a manger where the animals usually eat. He was the son of God born to be king of our lives. God loved us all so much. He gave us his only son, so that whoever believes in him will be with him always. During his life, Jesus healed sick people, even bringing some of them back to life when they died. He comforted those who were sad, and he shared with everyone how much his father God loved all of us. But still, Jesus faced very hard things. Some people didn't like what he said or did, and they wanted to get rid of him. They made him carry a heavy cross up the hill to Calvary. They laughed at him and whipped him. But he never stopped loving you. They put him on that cross with nails in his hands and feet and thorns on his head, but he never stopped loving you. As he took his last breath, he cried out, Abba, that's daddy in his language, Abba, father, into your hands I commit my spirit. That was forgiving in a very special way. Now let's think about what happened three days after he died, in the words of one of his friends. We were so sad when we woke up that morning. Our friend Jesus had been killed and his body buried in a tomb, a sort of cave with a heavy stone in front of it. My friends and I went early to go to the tomb. None of us had slept well, we were so upset and we'd stayed up awake late. We thought if we went to the tomb, we could feel near to Jesus. He'd been such a good friend and teacher, showing us God's way to live, always sharing with us how much God loved us. 
As we got near the tomb, the earth started to tremble underneath our feet. I wondered if I was dizzy from lack of sleep and I'd had no breakfast. But my friends were feeling it too. It was the second earthquake in three days. The first one happened when Jesus had called out Abba and then died. We stood still, looking ahead towards the tomb. A bright, shining figure was sitting on top of the heavy stone that had covered the entrance. He was bigger than any ordinary human, and stronger too, which was just as well, because there was no way any of us could have moved that big stone. He told us not to be scared. Jesus was alive. We wouldn't find him in the tomb. God had promised he would raise Jesus back to life, and now he had done it. As we went to tell Jesus' other friends, the disciples, we saw Jesus himself walking towards us. He came over and greeted us. We were so pleased to see him, and we could see how happy he was to see us too. Jesus told us that we didn't need to be frightened any more. Our job now was to tell others the wonderful news. The tomb was empty. Jesus is risen and will never stop loving us. Not ever. He loves you and he loves me. I wonder how Mary felt as she saw the empty tomb. The stone rolled away and Jesus not there. Was she frightened? Was she sad? Imagine their joy when she and the disciples and all their friends realised Jesus is alive. Some must have been excited. Some weren't sure. Maybe some said, I told you so. I don't know. But what I do know is Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you all the time, good or bad. You are set free. Just think about that for a moment. Now, go and share that great news. Who will you share it with? Happy Easter.